Okay, so um, we left off here um, with this uh, uh, the two the solutions in the two the general solutions in the two different regions when x is less than zero. We have these oscillatory solutions when x is when x is groups this should be greater than zero there so I've changed it when x is greater than zero um, then uh, we have different oscillatory solutions with a different wave number different um, uh, k2 okay so uh, uh, in order to see that uh, uh, how these uh, the plus i k x minus i k x plus i uh, k one x k k one x plus i k two x minus i k two x how that corresponds to left and right moving plane waves we we can basically multiply in general we can multiply these the remember this this is the time independent part of the wave function so we've already sort of because the we're assuming that the potential the step potential does not vary in time, so it's a static potential, uh, time independent potential, that we can separate uh, the solutions, this, the wave function solutions into time and, uh, and to temporal and spatial parts. So we're just solving the spatial part here, but if we then multiply the spatial solutions by the generalized, uh, the general uh, temporal part of the wave function, e to the minus i omega t. Um, and so in a general way, if we have a solution that is e to the i plus i k x, we multiply by e to the minus i omega t, then what we get is e to the i times k x minus omega t. And if you think about this, if you set this um, this phase here, this is again a, pl a plane wave, okay? And if we set this phase equal to a constant, okay, that's like basically following a particular phase in the in the plane wave, let's say a peak or a trough, you're following it and you're uh, you're basically uh, watching it move. It's almost as if you're sort of transforming into the rest frame of the wave. And so if we set that equal to constant, then that allows us to solve for the velocity of that constant phase uh, in the wave. Uh, so for example, again, a peak or a trough. And so we can, uh, basically by taking the time derivative, we find that the, the velo when, when we have k, uh, positive uh, i times kx minus omega t, we find that the, uh, the phase velocity omega k over k is greater than zero. Both omega and k are greater than zero. If on the other hand, we have a term that goes as minus i kx, and we multiply that by e to the, um, minus i omega t, then we get in, in here, we get the kx and omega t have the same sign. And so again, if we set that phase equal to constant, we find that the phase velocity is negative, okay? And so what we see is, and so that means that the, that the plane, so this, this, uh, this uh, region, the, in, in this case, the, the constant phase, the regions of constant phase in the wave are moving to the right and here they're moving to the left. So this is a right moving wave, right moving plane wave, and this is a left moving plane wave. Okay, so if we look back up here, then we see we have, this is, so this this part of the solution, whenever we, have, whenever we see e to the plus i k x, k1, uh, k1 or k2 x, that means the wave is moving to the right. If we see minus i kx, it means it's moving to the left. Okay, and so from this we can see that in the region where x is greater than zero, um, that is where the um, uh, potential uh, has a value u naught. And if we're considering solutions where the uh, initial beam of particles are coming are coming from the left, from left to right, then we can basically set d is equal to zero because uh, there's nothing there's nothing out here to the right to reflect the wave. This is a constant potential. There's no force. The derivative uh, is uh, of the potential is zero, and so there's no force, and so there's nothing there that can reflect uh, the wave function or the, the particle. And so we can't have a left moving um, solution in the region uh, uh, for x is greater than zero, although we in principle can have one for x is less than zero.